Hey, what's up guys? It's Trevor with Embers Fireplace and Outdoor Living. Man, I love springtime because all I get to do is unbox and play with barbecues. Today's no different. We're doing a super fun unboxing video of the Weber Genesis 2 series. Let's dive into this bad boy. Okay, so this is the Weber Genesis E335 series. We just got it put together. We'll show you a couple pictures here, but there was a couple things. Um, definitely took a little bit longer to put together. We put a lot of grills together here and uh, definitely on the longer side to assemble, which wasn't a huge deal. And then I wasn't a huge fan of their hardware. Their hardware, a lot of the hardware was actually made of plastic, the screws and things like that. And I think what they're trying to do is they sell so many of these grills, they're trying to simplify the process. A lot of it was just sort of push or plug in uh, screws. Um, just to make it easier for homeowners to be able to put these together. Not a huge deal, but the plastic, the hardware seemed a little cheap to me. But what I'm going to do today is really break this grill down from top to bottom and compare it against the best selling Genesis, which is the Genesis E310. I have a link to that video in the description below. I compared it against the Napoleon Rogue and I wasn't very nice to that guy. I sort of tore that guy apart. That poor 310 never stood a chance when I was <laughs> when I was reviewing it. But putting this together, I love, love the upgrades that this girl gets over the 310. So I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna get with the 335 over the 310. So you can decide if you wanna upgrade to the 335 or not. Don't forget, subscribe to our channel. It helps us out a ton. And if you're interested in any of these Weber grills, I'll include some links down below if you're interested in any accessories or if you want to purchase these grills as well. So let's get started here. Um, as far as the casters go, they do give you these bigger casters, at least on one side of the grill. I know just from moving grills around a lot in our showroom, those plastic smaller casters break pretty easy um, on, on a lot of the other manufacturers use the same ones. But um, I guess that's just because we move them a lot uh, in our showroom. On your deck, you're probably not going to be moving it around a whole lot. And then the propane tanks are going to sit on the side here, and then we sort of have these deflectors, um, which sort of hide it. And then you do get a, a measurement on here as well, so it tells you how full your propane tank is. You probably saw in my other video, again, not a huge fan of this being on the side here and being exposed. I don't think it's very attractive. But some other commenters pointed out, which... I kind of see the merit in it now is that it allows for more space in here. So even though it's not visually attractive from a functionality standpoint, I do kind of like that we got plenty of storage space without our propane taking up any room. So we have lots of room for tools, accessories, your grill cover, things like that that can store in here. Now, the biggest thing I'm gonna talk about, and it's gonna sound stupid, um, the one thing I absolutely hated about the 310 was that we had an open cabinet. One, I think it looks terrible. It looks really stupid. I don't know, I wanna hear what you guys think, but putting doors on it, I just think makes this pedestal look so much better. I just don't know why you wouldn't put doors on a grill. To me, that's like walking around without any pants on. Just, it just doesn't make any sense, right? You gotta, you gotta enclose this puppy and, and finish it off. I just think it makes this grill look a thousand percent better with closed doors. And then also from a functionality standpoint, with their grease trap right here, I did hear some comments from you guys as well that pets and, and rodents and stuff would get in here. So just being able to keep that enclosed from a practicality standpoint just makes a lot of sense. So I do think that that looks pretty good. So that's the cabinet. So to me, an immense, immense upgrade by just throwing some doors on here. Again, nothing fancy about them, but just aesthetically, I think it looks a million times better. I think it's well worth the upgrade just from a cosmetic standpoint. Okay, now let's get into the grill itself. Now you notice the color. What's cool, this blue color sort of a love-hate. If you like any of the enamel colors, if you like this blue in particular, you can really only get it on the 335 model. So if you're in love with this blue, decision's easy. You know you're getting the 335. Three, three, um, as far as the way the rest of the grill is constructed, it's pretty much the exact same as the 310 as far as the hood, everything like that, minus a couple things on the burners, which we'll talk about. So the heart and soul of these grills, like almost all of Weber 
Weber grills is gonna be this cast aluminum tub. That's a big important feature. One, it helps with good even heat retention and then it's completely seamless. So down the road with longevity, you don't have a chance of grease leaking out where it shouldn't leak because this is a seamless tub. So that's what this bit grill is built off of. We have three main burners. If you wanted to do the 435, this review would apply to that as well because it's the same grill, just bigger. So you're getting the extra burners with the 435. And then one thing that's pretty cool with Weber is their warming shelf, which if you're like me, you're not using all that much. Instead of just throwing it and putting it somewhere and then losing it, it actually folds down super easy. Couldn't figure out how to do it. So it actually folds down super easy. So you just lift this up and then it folds down and it's out of the way. So from a functionality standpoint, I really like the way that warming rack sort of hides and goes away. On this guy, you do get the cast iron uh, cooking grates. And um, if you upgrade to the stainless steel model, you're gonna spend a little bit more money versus the enamel finish. But on top of that too, when you go to the stainless steel model, you get stainless steel cooking grates as well, which is a pretty cool feature. Now, as far as cooking performance and, and even temperature control, Weber is known for very, very even temperatures. And we tested that out as we did on the 310, we did sort of a, a, they call it a toast test. So what we do is we fill the whole grill up with bread. We turn all the burners on. You don't obviously incinerate them because then you're not gonna be able to tell or see anything, but you turn everything on and then kind of see where your hot spots are. This grill had no hot spots, so it performed very, very well. We'll show you a clip of what that looked like, but you're not gonna have any problems with hot spots on this grill. And uh, we'll show you the burners here on the inside. We'll give you some clips of those. But there's one key, key difference as far as the controls go. The standard 310, you just get your three burners. What Weber's done is they've, they've given you a sear zone or a hot spot. And what they've done is they've added another, they sandwiched another burner in between your two regular burners. It's not different, it's just a regular old burner that just like the rest of them, but by condensing them together, we're creating a hot spot for a sear zone. So we're gonna fire this up. Let's test it out and actually see how hot it gets. We'll put our laser gun on it and see if we can actually create a hot spot with this extra portion here. And then, or if it's just gonna make the, the whole grill so hot it's going to incinerate everything. So let's test it out and check it out. So you can see we have the three main burners and they're evenly spaced apart. And then this sear burner is sort of sandwiched in between them. So let's put it back together and see what the taste test is like. Okay, so we've only had this grill on for about five minutes, so I'm sure it can get even hotter. So over here on the left side where you're not above the burner, you're at 360, so you can definitely do something cooler over here. But then right in the middle where these burners are at its he most heaviest concentration point, we're at 600, over 600 degrees. So you're not gonna have any problem searing. So that sear station definitely works. I mean, you're over 300 here, so I mean, you're definitely gonna be hot all the way across the grill unless we turn this burner off altogether but right in the middle, it's definitely hotter. So we're definitely creating a hot spot right there for searing, which is what you're gonna want. So definitely works. And then the last key main difference with this grill is gonna be the side burner. Now, again, if you're like me, I'm not a huge fan of a standard side burner because they generally don't get hot enough to really do anything, to boil water, things like that, especially some of them that are surface mounted here because the wind's gonna mess with the side burner. I do like that this side burner sits down lower. And uh, so again, let's put the heat gun on this and actually see how hot it gets to see if it's actually gonna be useful or not. Okay, I think it's hot enough. Look at our metal there. I mean, it is just fire red. So we're 320 in the front side, 450 right, right in the middle. 430 right on then 450 ought to do it i think that'll get you <laughs> that'll get you boiling water <laughs> if you need to so side burner works check that off the box then your igniter is going to be here for all of your burners as well 
So that's the 335. So again, if you're like me, there's the Genesis model is Weber's best-selling model. But when you go on their website, there's so many stinking models, it's kind of hard to tell which model you should get. So I'm gonna to try to break it down and simplify it and make it easy to understand what you're getting as you upgrade. So the 310, which we reviewed, did not like it. That is their best seller. That is the most common model that sells at all the big box stores. It's their best selling unit. Not a huge fan. When we go to the 335, what upgrades do you get for a couple hundred bucks? Well, for a couple hundred dollars, you're gonna get an enclosed cabinet, so you're gonna get doors. To me, that is a big deal. Again, maybe for you guys it's not, but for me it's a big deal that we get these doors. We get the extra sear burner and we get the side burner. So those are really the three main differences. Doors, extra burner, side burner. For a couple hundred dollars, I think it's, for me it's worth the swing because you're not taking a giant leap to like the Summit Grill or something like that. You're getting a lot of nice upgrades for not that much money. So for me, the 335 is sort of the sweet spot. In the Weber lineup, we sort of have, we have the Spirit, we have the Genesis. Within the Genesis, we have the different models. And then we have the Summit, which is gonna be their high-end model. The upper end Genesis, to me, is Weber's sweet spot. And I think where they should really try to focus their attention because this is a really, really high quality grill that performs really well with a lot of features for under $1,000. So you're not in these crazy tiered price points. So I really like this grill. I love the features they gave it. Weber, of course, has a 10-year warranty. Really solidly backed company. Their customer service is great. You can call their 1-800 number, get warranties, parts, replacement parts for the next 10 years. No problem at all. So I really am happy with the upgrades over the 310. To me, it's a no-brainer. Get the 335 over the 310, and then you can even upgrade from there if you want. But I think the 335 is the sweet spot. It's my favorite grill within their lineup. Question is, we have so many awesome grills here. I can't decide what I want to do as far as doing a versus video. Versus video seems to do the best. I don't know, I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. You guys need to leave comments in the, section, in the comment section. Tell me what grill you wanna see this go up against in a head-to-head -head battle, in a head-to-head -head showdown, and then we'll do the video. So let me hear your thoughts. I can't figure out what I wanna do. But we'll also for sure do it up against the Weber Summit, which is the highest end Weber model. But let's hear some of the other brands that you wanna see this up against, and we'll try to make that video happen. So. If you're in the Denver metro area, don't forget you can come down to our showroom. You can see these products in person for yourself. Um, again, you can check out all of our products on our website at www.embersliving.com. Make sure you guys subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.